BlackRock enters asset tokenization race with a new fund on the Ethereum network. And this comes at a time when the real world assets or RWA's narrative is starting to explode. But have you messed Pendle Finance or OM? Then don't worry, you're not too late. And in this video, I'm going to talk about five small to mid cap real world asset cryptos that I think are just about to take off. So do me a favor, hit that like button and let's get into today's video. Now, what is real world assets all about? And what is tokenization? Well, it's basically bridging the gap between traditional finance and DeFi. There's a bunch of different assets out there ranging from gold to fine art and oil. And all of these have the potential to be linked to a blockchain so that they can be traded in a decentralized manner rather than through centralized exchanges such as Vanguard. Using centralized exchanges such as Vanguard to trade gold and other things ultimately can cost a lot when it comes to fees. Also, other expensive assets out there, such as fine art or homes, can be very expensive and very difficult for an individual to have ownership of. And this breaks down the barrier for individuals to have ownership of homes for rental. Now, traditional finance as a whole each year is worth $600 trillion, which is an absolutely crazy amount. Especially when we consider that right now, the entire crypto market is worth only 2.46 trillion dollars that means that if just five percent of that 600 trillion dollars which would be like 30 trillion dollars floods into crypto and blockchain technology then things could go absolutely crazy and that's why it's such an exciting opportunity right now okay let's cut to the chase when it comes to cryptos and narratives and things like that i've already explained to you lots of times on this channel that we need to have some form of catalyst in order to get the ball rolling and ultimately get us some gains. Now, obviously, when it comes to cryptocurrency, some of the more successful narratives out there have been AI, DeepIn, GameFi in the past. And these are all growing because of something important, because they are all onboarding users. And it's really important that the world's biggest digital asset manager, BlackRock, with $10 trillion under management right now, are starting to move into this niche. And that's what's causing the growth and excitement as people anticipate the next moves. The same was true of AI. We saw lots of growth from NVIDIA. The NVIDIA conference was coming up. And that's why all the AI coins were exploding. And yes, the real world asset rotation through narratives has been kind of running a little bit. Some coins, the early movers, the likes of Pendle, have already been booming. So probably not the one for us. OM as well has been shifting really aggressively, seeing around a 30x since just at the end of 2023. I've seen lots of others talking about Ondo, and Ondo has seen around 300% move in the last couple of months, which isn't terrible, and we're going to see significantly more growth coming out of Ondo, but Ondo already has quite a big market cap, so I want to discard that one. But I want to tell you, just because a coin has seen a good like 2 or 3x, if it still remains with a relatively small market cap, at the right time within the narrative, then it can absolutely blow up. And all we're looking for is coins that are either somewhere in this accumulation phase or somewhere in this disbelief phase. Because after that, like AGI, we get a bull market. We run up into an area, we then eventually have a nice pullback and then we'll move on again. And because some of these coins have only just started to pump again, it kind of feels like maybe we're here, but actually if you zoom out and use this four box principle, then you'll see that most of these coins we're looking at right now are still in this blue box. And now you're like, okay, I get it, right? It's good narrative. Tell me the coins. I want to buy something. Firstly, don't just go and buy anything I talk about because maybe I don't know anything. And maybe you should go and do your own research. But don't worry. I'm going to guide you through a little bit. Now, the first one we're going to talk about today is Clearpool or C Pool. Current market cap sits around $80 million at the time of making this video. Now, Clearpool merges capital markets with blockchain technology. This offers unsecured liquidity to liquidity borrowers. The lenders who are then lending funds to the protocol and taking risks in doing so are then rewarded. Now, as the first decentralized credit marketplace, they've also been funded by Mantle gaining over 250,000 Mantle tokens in order to run their platform on Mantle. Now, Mantle's already been seeing some good growth already this year. I'll be talking about it back in January. So let's get across to Clearpool. Now, I obviously understand that, you know, this chart seems to have been going up and it's only kind of been around in circulation for not very long. Currently, as we look at it, it's up just over 100%. And you're like, oh, well, why didn't you tell me about it four or five weeks ago? Obviously, at the time, maybe it wasn't the right time to be getting into this narrative and there was more profit to be made in the likes of ai and dpin and as well as that game tokens and also i don't always like to be the first mover when it comes to investing into different coins because i want to see that it's going to start to gain traction and see some movement why because for every coin that you find that starts to get on the move many of them won't go anywhere 
Okay, whereas these ones are already starting to wake up. Now we get a far lower risk move still with decent rewards left on the table. Now, as we look at this from a price perspective, you know, there's not much previous data to go off. We've broken beyond these highs and things still looking positive. As this narrative begins to run hotter, I think that this coin is still also going to see some good growth. Now, Swarm is a tokenized trading exchange where you can trade real world assets such as stocks and shares and gold and all sorts of other bits and pieces directly on chain. All of the different assets are 100% backed by regulatory compliance. This is another very important thing when we talk about real world assets because regulatory compliance is going to come in and continue to come in more harder and more aggressively than I think many can even imagine. As the regulation system wakes up to crypto and blockchain technology, it's going to have to start utilizing different exchanges perhaps like this. As you can see at the moment, they've already got $19.8 million already locked on platform and only has a market cap of around $38 million, making it a pretty small cap coin. Now, as we can see, Swarm has doubled in value over the last kind of week or so and is kind of currently having a little bit of a chill out. But still, remember, $38 million. I personally like to trade in the sweet spot zone of around $20 to $40 million. I typically don't really get into many assets under $20 million market cap because the risks I perceive are just too high. Therefore, just under the $40 million bracket seems like a good opportunity. Remember, many of these platforms could be worth billions of dollars in the future. If it's with a 40 mil market cap goes to a billion dollars, you're looking at like a 25X plus, which is pretty outstanding. Now, as with this current narrative, previously we've seen massive growth in others such as AI, Deepin. Now I'm bringing you these projects today and back in the autumn, for those who were subscribed, I was talking about the likes of Panglin, which since then has done over a 30X and others like AGI, which have done a 17X. So if you're not already and you want to understand more in depth about different crypto coins, as well as tools and tips and tricks on how to find new crypto coins and manage your positions, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Now, next up is IX Swap. IX Swap aims to democratize the private trading markets using blockchain techs like AMMs, liquidity pools, DeFi and DEXs. This is aimed to address the tokenization issues and make it more of a level playing field so that you as an individual can access the same opportunities that perhaps only the big banks and large net worth individuals have been able to do previously. Now, as I've previously showed you in other charts, you can see that IX Swap is just about to exit from its disbelief phase. Just using the same color coordination thing that we like to use on this channel, we can see that we're in the blue zone and literally as we speak, IX Swap around 50 cents is just leaving into a bull market phase. I think this could be an explosive next move for IX Swap and a move up to previous highs could happen extremely quickly. And also because it's only a $62 million market cap, the great opportunity there is very exciting, okay? So a lot of these projects, they do seem to be getting going, but yeah, if we're getting in somewhere around this kind of disbelief zone, ideally, you know, kind of after a little bit of a pullback, ideal. And then after we break kind of beyond these highs, things can get exciting very quickly. Now onto a slightly less risky one with a slightly larger market cap of around $151 million is a Maple Finance. And I want you to think about this. You're looking at this right now being like, oh, it doesn't look very exciting. You know, I, I want to see like meme coins. I want to see game fight. You and me and most of the people in crypto who are like degenerates and chasing kind of quick and easy money, we don't want to trade stocks and shares like Coca-Cola and Apple, okay? Because the gains and stuff are not good enough for us. We like the degens, okay? But consider this, the banks and people who've got billions of dollars in the bank don't want to be risking it by putting it into crypto. Not only that, if you've got billions of dollars to invest, investing into crypto coins doesn't really give you much rate on return because there's just not enough liquidity in some of these smaller market cap coins. Therefore, they want to access bigger asset pools. And the biggest asset pools are in traditional finance stocks and shares. And that's why this concept's so exciting. The blockchain tech is going to absolutely revolutionize traditional finance markets. And it's coming in right now, being backed by some of the biggest names out there, BlackRock, JP Morgan. Just keep this in the back of your mind, even though these coins might sound like not the most sexy and not the most exciting. This is where you could also see mass adoption being accelerated. Now, Maple Finance offers a fixed income options on a DeFi. How does it work? Well, they provide unfixed loans to borrowers. So, for example, if you've got funds, you can go and give it to the platform. They will then go and take those funds and invest them into other things, which is very similar to how a bank works. This is backed up by real world assets. Now, what typically a bank might do is encourage people to invest and leave money in the bank. They'll then take that money. Then they go and give it to other people to pay for their mortgages in the form of loans and things like that. Then they rely on people paying the money back into the loans for the mortgages. The bank takes a huge amount of money 
and then gives a tiny bit of interest payment back to the individual who put money in the bank. And this is obviously very unfair because the bank makes loads of money and you investing in the bank make nothing. And therefore they're able to offer better percentages to their investors and everyone's a winner. And this is also really key when we're looking at real world asset platforms. Secured lending backed by US treasury bills with daily liquidity, okay? Lots of crypto could well go through some form of regulatory systems in the future. It's going to become more and more difficult for you and I and everyone else to access exchanges and other things. And that's where these platforms will thrive. Not only that, but bonds and things like that are far less risky assets. And once you start to move into bear markets for the likes of crypto, when the liquidity is decreasing, people will tend to go and look for secure assets such as bonds, maybe even gold, etc. And they're targeting 15% APY on USDC is something to consider if and when we move into a bear market. Now as well, I did plan on bringing you LTO, but right now it's just gone up 26%, which is not ideal because obviously, you know, it's late in the day, should have got this video out earlier, my apologies. But you know, as we just look at this, I just want to still understand these patterns, okay? Bear market, accumulation phase, and while you might be like, well, yeah, but it's already up into its bull market, it's actually not, okay? But I do think that maybe it has a bit of sideways play around in here, okay? Because this is the next area, the disbelief phase. We could see maybe a bounce here, around here. Uh, and then once we start to kind of break beyond that, we get into our bull market phase. So it's worth having a look and maybe looking at where you might see a pullback in here. Currently around a 70, maybe even $80 million market cap time of making this video. And as you can see from previous highs, there's still pretty good growth to be had. Now, as you can see from this rather nice website, Love Avaya on chain, layer one for real world assets and privacy. And as we have kind of like at the moment, layer one blockchain, like Solana, Avalanche, Ethereum still currently dominating the space. I do think that we might start to see the rise of the more specialized blockchain. For example, within Dpin, I think Peak Network could start to grow really fast. LTO as a layer one blockchain for public and privacy could also offer a good opportunity. And it's built for true real world asset ownership. So for example, if you want to buy gold because you think gold's a safe asset if inflation goes crazy and all these things, you don't want to carry around with you a ton of gold, okay? Because it's super heavy, it's inconvenient, you can get robbed. Well, that Whereas having it as tokenized assets is key. But then again, you want to also guarantee that you still have the true ownership of it. And it's not just something that's been created in order for you to buy it. And maybe it's not backed by anything. So this is a very key and interesting one. We've got lots of things going on in the future and definitely worth delving into more. Although I do think that this coin has had a good pump recently. And maybe you could look for a pullback opportunity. If you get that, maybe it's a good one. Now, last but not least, Origin DeFi Governance. Currently sits around $6.7 million market cap, which is absolutely tiny, but presents something pretty interesting because it's all about Ethereum staking and liquid restaking tokens. Now, right now, we've seen a big boom in Bitcoin. Bitcoin's been waking up. Typically, the next mover is going to be Ethereum and the Ethereum ecosystem will likely explode with it. Now, when it comes to DeFi and things like that, you can end up getting a little bit confused, but this is probably one of the biggest kind of market areas within crypto right now. Effectively, in the past, when you went to state tokens, those tokens then had no use to you. They were just sort of accumulating you a reward. It's obviously fine, but there's a lot of liquidity left over that's just kind of gone to waste. I think there's billions of dollars locked up in liquidity right now. So what restaking platforms do is that you can stake your tokens and in return, you get a liquid staking token that can then go and be used to earn other yields. And this is why Origin Ether earns yield from liquid staking tokens. Holders can earn superior yield as APY are optimized between liquid staking tokens and liquidity provision strategies. This means that you get way more in terms of trading fees and reward tokens on top. Now also what I wanna share with you and something that is always important when we're looking at new projects, is that they have this team that's come from the likes of YouTube, PayPal, Coinbase, early adopters. And this is always one thing to consider with sort of smaller market cap coins. We wanna make sure that we have a nice transparent team that we can see here, and you can go and check out all their social media. Now there's two different tokens that this platform utilizes. The Origin Dollar, the yield generating stable coin. So you basically hold it in an Ethereum wallet and it creates new rewards all the time. Origin Ether, the other token, allows users to earn a superior yield on top of the other one. Now something else that's worth looking at, this is basically the revenue of this platform compared to its market cap. Very, very important because you can see some other big names on here. And you can see the likes of Maker and Pendle down here, which have very large market cap, but their market cap versus their TVL is not so good. And then you come up the list, you see Aave, and then we see OGV at the top, okay? Very small market cap currently at the time of making this video. Fully valuation is around 31 million. 
But the market cap right now, current market cap around 6.8 million, with a TVL with a fully dilated valuation versus TVL of 0.16. Okay, which is pretty good. The bigger the number, the less promising it is. So what would be the benefit of holding a token like this? Well, obviously, you know, the more people who want to hold a token takes them out of supply. People are obviously already doing it while we've got high TVL. But because you can earn an APY because of the unique system in which this works of around 28%. 28% APY is ludicrous. Also, holding a token gives you voting rights on the DAO and adds utility to the whole platform in general. So given the size of the market cap, the team behind this and the kind of unique proposal that they're offering, it seems like an interesting one that definitely is worth paying attention to. Now, I know many of people are always like, where can I buy this coin? I've never heard of it before. Well, it's OGV. Uh, on coin market cap once you've done your research if you're still interested you can come down to where it says markets and this is the same for all coins i've talked about today and come down to all of the different ones available now i use mexi because it's the exchange that i know pretty much i can guarantee any token we talk about is going to be available on and if you use the link down below you'll get a bonus when you sign up on the platform 0.1 percent spot make take fees zero percent futures fees pretty much the lowest fees with over four and a half thousand different crypto coins on the platform now if you're struggling to access mexi or any exchange because of where you live then all you need to do is get yourself a nord vpn link down below guys and if you use that link we've got an exclusive deal where you get four months extra free and then after that it's around two dollars fifty per month this is like the price of a cup of coffee it allows you to change your location, use different exchanges, also protects you from people spying on your exchange deals, and it's pretty much an essential bit of kit for any crypto trader or budding crypto trader out there. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that slightly longer than normal video today. If you enjoyed learning about real world assets, then let me know down below which other narrative you want me to talk about next. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one. Bye bye.